Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for checking out this video. Today we are gonna turn this mess of a sewing station into this. Let me show you how I did it. So sewing is one of those things that our family doesn't do often enough to have a full setup and we needed a solution that was collapsible and easy to store away when not in use but not a huge pain to get everything out if we needed to do a quick project. I built this cabinet specifically to expand and collapse as needed. So let me show you how it works. The top expands using these lockable hinges, and then this door opens up to reveal all the storage underneath. So here you can see we've got all of our spools and ribbons and random storage here along the door, and then it's built specifically around this three drawer stair -like container We've got all of our fabric and other materials under here. Everything can be stored away when not in use, so let's see how I built it. I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood for the cabinet base and top. I followed my cut list and broke down the two side pieces and the two top pieces on the table saw. From there I drilled pocket holes which will be the primary method of joining all these pieces together. I like to use glue and a couple of brads to hold things in place because pocket screws can sometimes cause boards to shift. For some additional strength, I added a couple of pieces of plywood along the top and bottom of the back, again using glue, brads, and pocket screws. For the front and sides of the top pieces, I added some one inch strips of poplar using glue and brads. This will provide some added protection to dings and dents, and it also hides the edges of the plywood. I intentionally left these pieces long so I could trim them using my flush cut saw. To hide the plywood edges of the cabinet base, I used some iron-on birch edge banding. This stuff is easy to work with and really makes the finished project look a lot better. Again, I left these long and cleaned things up using a utility knife. I then used some dowels to fill the pocket holes that I made earlier. These stay put with some glue and I'll be back later to clean them up. Next I moved on to the cabinet door. I'm using poplar for the door frame and please be better than me here and use a push stick. Each piece is three inches wide and I'm going for a pseudo shaker style look here. I squared up the pieces on the crosscut sled to ensure that the door would be plumb and flush once assembled. I'm using pocket screws here again to assemble the frame and I was mindful to put the holes toward the outside so when I route the rabbit later for the center panel, I won't run into any of those screws. I like using some CA glue or super glue when making frames this way because it holds the boards in place while I'm driving the screws. I still clamp everything down but I find that extra step goes a long way in getting the joints as tight as possible. Next I used the flush cut blade on my oscillating tool to clean up the dowels that I used to fill all the pocket holes. I then sanded them smooth which prepped them for my second favorite tool in the shop, Bondo. I like Bondo for painted projects because it dries really quick and sands really smooth. I used it to cover all the pocket holes as well as any of the seams. I was sure to mix it in small batches because of the quick dry time and once everything was dry I sanded it smooth using 100 grit sandpaper. Next I use my router to put a rabbit along the inside of the frame to accept the panel. This router is a new tool for me and every time I use it I love it even more. It has both a plunge and fixed base and the motor runs smooth as silk. Because the rabbit leaves a rounded corner I use a sharp chisel to square everything up. I could have also rounded the corners of the panel but using a chisel this way is quicker and easier for me. I then cut the panel using quarter inch birch plywood and glued it in place. No brads here, just a good amount of glue and clamps. To mount the door I'm using these no mortise hinges. They were easy to install and I really like not having to mortise out where the hinges will sit. I installed them on the base first and then put the door in place and once it was square to the base I marked the holes and screwed them in from the inside of the cabinet. 
Now that the door was installed, I moved on to the storage components that will be mounted to the inside of it. I first made a spool holder using a 1 inch strip of poplar and a 3 16 inch dowel. I marked along the poplar and then made two 10 degree wedges and glued them to my drill press. This held the poplar so the holes were drilled on an angle and so that the spools won't fall off. Then the dowels were glued in place and set aside to dry. I then made two brackets to hold a rod that will store larger spools of ribbon. One side has a fixed hole and the other side has a slot for the rod to slide into. I used all sorts of tools to make that slot, including the drill press, chisel, dremel, file, and sandpaper. And once all that was done, I added a couple of blocks so I could more easily attach them to the door. The last storage solution is a couple of shelves and these were made using half inch and quarter inch plywood. I'm not expecting much abuse on these, so some glue and brads did the trick for assembly. I made these large enough to hold some scissors and other sewing equipment and made sure to not make them too deep so they didn't interfere with the stairlight drawers when the door was closed. Now that the construction was complete, I gave everything a final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper and then assembled everything to make sure it all fit. And here you can get a better idea of how the door storage looks. For the finished, I used my Graco True Coat 360 DS paint sprayer. I coated everything with primer, sanded it at 400, and then applied a semi-gloss white for the finish. This is my first time using the sprayer, and I am a big fan. You can get it for about $165 on Amazon at the time of this video, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now that the finish was on, I attached the collapsible top using some locking hinges. I clamped the top in place so I could make sure that it was level, and this made the install much easier. These hinges have a lever that disengages the locking mechanism and the action on them is very smooth. They came with mounting hardware and I can tell they're going to be plenty strong enough to hold the top securely when we're using it. And I gotta say, it was really satisfying to collapse the top for the first time, and I probably did it about a dozen times. Equally satisfying was finishing this project and getting that corner of our office better organized. We're going to use this for our sewing equipment, but I think it could be adapted to any type of arts and crafts. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in plans for this and I'll work on making some. I'll also have links below to all the tools and hardware that I use for this build. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it into this, to this.